Geese. The cold freaking geese. 3D Country is the second album from Geese, the best band name in the world. And they are a band that I enjoyed on the first album. I thought they were pretty good a couple of years back. Thought it was an enjoyable rock album, but it didn't really move me like that, you know? It was good, but I didn't really get moved. But this new one here, 3D Country, is an album that truly moved me. I am really, really having a good time with this one. And I think it might potentially end up being one of the best rock albums of the year and will be pretty hard to come close to because I think what Geese are doing right now, man, is just so good. They're manic, they're throttling, they're strange, they're odd. I don't think the vocalist is going to be for everyone because he's snarky and he's strange and he's bizarre on nearly every single track. And I think there'll be people out there that find that quite off-putting. And if you listen to this and you think, ah, no, nah, this ain't for me, it's not going to be one of those albums that I'm going to be sat here thinking, how can you not like this, you know? Sometimes there are albums where it's like, it's just so easy to see why you'd like it. But with this kind of vocalist, I'm not going to be that, I'm not going to be that bothered. I'm going to be like, yeah, fair. Fair. Immediately straight from the get-go from the 2122 track, which is perhaps the 212 sequel by Zuli Banks, maybe, is uh, is just so herky-jerky right out the gate. His vocals are just immediately bizarre. And I think they did this on purpose. Like, the opening notes of this guy's voice are just like... <laughs> and you're just like, okay, yeah, we know what we're getting here. But the instrumental, like, freak-out that comes at the end of the track that this track kind it kind of builds to it's weird this track because there are bands out there that are doing similar things where they're like you know getting you to that that crescendo moment and the whole song kind of just collapses by the end but this track just does something a bit jaggedy and it's a bit odd and there's no build or there's no like crescendo point it just starts to freak out in such a weird way but it sounds stellar to my ears the title track is one of the best tracks as well. In fact, this entire run from the beginning um, is a really, really strong run. Perhaps the best run of tracks on the whole thing. It might be a bit of a front-loaded album in that sense, not to discredit the second half, but the best moments I do think come in this first half. But this track is great. Uh, it ain't easy living alone, as he keeps telling us. And um, that, yeah, the, the, the gospel, the gospel inclusion coming through in the background. Um, well, it's not really background they kind of like do this like call and re re response thing that they do uh where he's sort of singing and then the gospel comes through it sounds great honestly like the vocal she sounds fantastic and it's just a really nice addition to the song um kind of getting a lot of like squid vibes coming through already on this album um anything that sounds like squid i think is a good thing although i will say i, I was a bit disappointed with the new album you might be wondering why i've not reviewed that one yet but it was because i wasn't too keen on it but I'm thinking more of the first, the previous Squid album, you know, with tracks like Narrator and stuff. There's lots of that kind of coming through on this. And I, I'm not too surprised that there are more bands starting to come out of the woodworks now, even out of the UK, that are starting to become this, like, new breed or this new era of rock bands. Because I, I think this side of, the, of, of, of you know rock music is, is quite influential and I think there's going to be a lot more bands that want to sound like it and this track particularly just feels like it's pulling from those sort of uh, windmill bands if you will. Cowboy Nudes is another track that's a bit wacky he says he fell in love with Tumbleweed there's just some really odd funny lines coming through um, he's definitely a, a character this singer for sure he says some things that are just so bizarre but I love the way the, the way he like enunciates his words particularly when he says warrior on this track i think it sounds great but this is the thing as well like these tracks are a bit odd and a bit strange but they're so catchy as well like they are very accessible as they are they're really really good i see myself is fantastic as well maybe one of the more uh, shinier tracks on the album with the way it just kind of gleams and the vocals and the production just sort of pops in a different way. It sounds so much different to the other songs. Really sounds like something Dirty Projectors would do. And then if you mashed up that with something Scissor Sisters would do, I think honestly you'd get this friggin' song. And that is a, a combination I have never said in my life and that is why I know this band is doing some good stuff because saying dirty projectors 
and scissor sisters in the same sentence is something I never thought I'd friggin' say. And if you've never listened to Scissor Sisters, go back to some of their early singles, man. They had some pop bangers. He's just such a kooky singer as well. He's so magnetic. Like, I feel immediately, like, just under his control when he sings. I feel immediately, like, I can't not look away. There's just something so strange and commanding about his personality and it's great to listen to he's such an interesting and entertaining vocalist and i think taking this sound further or taking what they do further with further albums could really cement themselves as being one of the most entertaining bands out there i feel like there's something to this honestly undoer as well like i was saying with the windmill comparisons earlier uh, this one reminds me a lot of black midi um, in a good way as well so they've certainly got their influences and it doesn't just go to modern artists i think they're going further back than that as well with Mysterious Love, with the sort of David Byrne-isms coming through as well. I'm getting some parquet courts throughout some of these tracks as well. I like the parquet courtification of music, honestly. I think a lot more bands want to be as cool as those guys out there, to be honest with you. But going back to uh, Undoer, um, yeah, this track for me, man, is just so good. And he sounds at times like he's possessed by a holy spirit. You know how, like... With films, you always get, you know, the possession scenes in the horror films of like, you know, some kind of demon coming through and he, the, the person goes all freaky and all weird and it's all... Wah. Right. Well, imagine that, but it's possessed by like a holy spirit. It's a good possession. And he just sounds all, all like strange and heavenly and weird. It just sounds like he's traveling down from heaven and he's like, eh, we, you know, the, with the wings and the whiteness that you'd expect from like a, a, an angelic looking creature thing, even though we don't really know what these things look like, but we seem to think that's what they look like. I just feel like that's what this is. Love the guitar tone on the Tomorrow's Crusades track. Um, sort of feels like it could be um, like uh, more amplified because the guitar sound sounds so good but of course his voice just drowns a lot of stuff out it's, uh, sometimes apart from when the instrumentation just kind of crashes together and you get those freakazoid moments but this particular track I do feel like the guitar could have been a bit more prominent because it sounds great it sounds really lovely actually but yeah um, just generally a very very intriguing and odd album but also really catchy and really fun and entertaining at every given moment he is quite the guy, honestly. He, he has such an interesting approach to vocals. He has his influences. The band have their influences, obviously, as well. I've name dropped so many different artists in this video, um, but it's all great. Like, it sounds really good. It's really replayable as well. Like, I've been wanting to go back to this because I just get such a, a, such a rush listening to it. It's such a good album. And long live this era of weird, arty, punky rock bands, post-punk bands that we have had over the past three, four, five years because although we're inundated with a lot of bands that want to be like this at the moment, they're all bloody good. And yeah, I think this era of rock music is, is pretty special and I think we could be seeing and witnessing some legendary bands actually and the the bigger they get or the more reputation that they gain or the more exposure that they gain is for the better and i think we are in for a treat we really are i think this is another addition to that era of bands and i'm i'm here for it easy eight out of ten one of the easiest eights i've given all year for sure could be one that grows on me a little bit more too but even regardless, whatever, the score's irrelevant here. I'm telling you that it's great. I, I am here to tell you how good this is. And I hope you enjoy it as well. I hope there's going to be a bit of a cult following for this album because I've seen some positivity towards it on, you know, rate your music and sites like that. And other reviewers giving it a glowing review. But I hope there's more growth and it's not just secluded to music nerds on the internet telling you that it's good. I want to see these bands gain bigger exposure because i think they're good for music and they're interesting and they're fun as well they really are and geese 
is the best band name of all time as well. Come on, Geese. What a great album. Thank you for watching. Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Do have a good day as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my Patreon as well. And goodbye.